Okay, today I'm going to talk about the psychology of guilt. Here. Um, our research question is, is guilt good? Um, the popular conception is, uh, perception is the more guilt, the less likely they are to repeat a crime. So the general perception is guilt is good. That's the popular uh, perception, but as a scientist, as a social scientist, we want to really uh, question all of our assumptions and use the most efficient uh, approach to any kind of uh, solution of therapy. So the general causal relationship is the more guilt, the less crime. So the question is, is this true? Um, I want to kind of break this question down specifically, a little bit more uh, specifically. So the question is, is guilt good? Absolutely. Um, we're going to assume that some level of guilt, some level of remorse or empathy is, is, uh, is positive, is good, but we want to question whether that's an absolute relationship between the more guilt uh, you feel, the less likely you are to repeat any kind of uh, dysfunctional behavior. So, uh, and, and even uh, the more positive question is, uh, so uh, we want to research the potential negative downside of guilt. But we also want to uh, take a positive perspective to say what is the best position to take uh, towards past mistakes in order to learn from them and not repeat them. So um, take a brief gander at the science. There's I, Again, there's not much research on this. I want to kind of fill this out a little bit. But um, there are some trait researchers that describe uh, the JSO population as ridden. Um, this is uh, in younger adult offenders, actually, they, they're a highly guilt-ridden population. Um, when you look at the uh, psychology of guilt, um, you, uh, they're associated with both depression and anxiety. So the, the causal relationship isn't clear. Is uh, Are the guilt uh, levels triggering the depression and anxiety? Uh, that's a question We're not, we can't completely tease that uh, causal relationship out. So my, my hypothesis is guilt is a paradox. Um, too much is a problem. And, and this is consistent when you look at developmental patterns. Um, rarely do you get any kind of trait that is universally a positive thing. You, you would, when you get too much of it, it can become a bad thing. So this is it goes back to the, the Chinese saying, too much of a good thing is a bad thing. So. Uh, too much is a problem, too little is a potentially a problem as well. Um, but just right can be a positive. So what I'm hypothesizing the danger is, um, we don't want guilt to uh, feed a depression or trigger an offense cycle. So if, if, uh, if the JSO's behavior was triggered by depression, um, we don't want any kind of, uh, if, he, if he's feeling guilt-ridden, uh, that depression can potentially trigger an offense cycle. So I'm going to explore how this can theoretically work. Um, so guilt offense cycle, and this is a JSO example, or just, it could be an SO example. Uh, so the first step is I hurt so many people um, and so I guess that could be a cognition associated with the feeling of guilt um, that cognition can be associated with uh, your identity so it can become uh, I must be an evil monster we can say you know uh, that I cause other people pain you uh, if the person internalizes it makes that part of themselves a sense of self and makes them a, a a present uh, sense of, uh, of lack or worthlessness, you could say. So that's the evil monster uh, label that the person giving themselves. So I'm worthless. So once that um, negative self image, self identity is established, um, you're going to get a, 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 an emotional association uh, triggered along with that. So. Once the I'm worthless or uh, the negative self is established, then depression is going to, it can be triggered. It, it, it's going to be triggered if you have that kind of uh, self-image. So, um, 
So the danger here is that what I, what I hypothesize could be happening is once depression occurs, um, you start to get uh, neuronal cell loss. So the cells will start to degrade and, and atrophy because of uh, the, the negative affect. Uh, and so in order to fight that, the brain can be wanting to trigger a lot of uh, pleasure sensation. So. Um, a lot of depressed people have overeating problems, have any kind of drug problems. So what they're trying to do is kickstart their brain in order to uh, kind of shake them out of that massive cell death. So another way to do that is, is sex obsession. And, you know, they may not be consciously aware of that's what they're doing and that's why they're obsessing about it. But uh, so this is the kind of ironic almost uh, uh, triggering that the feeling of guilt uh, which could cause depression, could trigger obsession, uh, and of course obsession uh, could lead to more uh, more offense thoughts. So uh, you know, you can easily think about past victims here, uh, but you can go to uh, well, since I'm already worthless, I might as well offend again. So then you get the reoffense. So that's something that uh, may not be immediately intuitive, that a, a feeling of guilt could could promote the very behavior that you're feeling guilty about, but uh, this is the causal relationship that uh, I'm, I'm hypothesizing could, could occur. So um, another, I, I would suggest that a, a more temperate approach the guilt needs to be established in order to make sure it's uh, sustainable and healthy. So, uh, I, I, just my association for what guilt are is, uh, like, I, I did this, I'm a bad person. Um, I would consider that, like, a, uh, I would consider that a negative coping strategy, actually. Um, because of the associations of, uh, uh, of identity that, it's an ongoing thing and, and the, whatever uh, the connotations of bad means. So, um, but I consider grief to be actually a, a generally positive thing. Um, it doesn't necessarily feel good, but uh, it, I, I do think it's a progressive feeling. So I'm, I feel really bad that she was in pain. So that's the empathetic uh, feeling uh, and also feeling it, it's not necessarily a, a it, it's also a, it's a cognition, but it's also a feeling. So I feel really bad she's in pain. So that's the empathetic element. Um, the remorse is more, I feel really bad I behaved the way I did. So you're not associating that with a sense of self or an identity, but you are um, looking bad at a, at, at a past reaction action and uh, feeling a sense of grief about what your own behavior is. So the two elements, the grief is more extroverted, the remorse is more introverted, but I think those are measured in mature ways to approach the past. So I'm just going to try to, this is a hypothesis of where I see the breakdown between positive uh, grief and remorse and negative guilt. Um, so uh, this are cognitions associated with the positive and the negative. Um, I understand why it occurs. That's positive. I feel grief for the person suffering. I feel remorse for the other person for my own actions. Uh, confident behavior. I'm confident the behavior won't be repeated. And these are all good feelings about uh, about looking back at the past. Um, negative association and cognitions associated with guilt. I could say is. Um, cannot forgive myself for past mistakes. Uh, I believe I'm a bad person uh, for my behavior. Uh, I feel crippling embarrassment for my behavior. Um, I would consider these uh, things that can potentially trigger uh, reoffense or tr trigger other problems. Um, but that would be up to research, a, a little bit uh, closer research experiments. So. Um, Again, this is just laying out the framework. This is very exploratory, uh, but any kind of assumption should be explored by science in order to 
get the most effective result and uh, make sure that our assumptions are promoting healing. Uh, the full therapeutic value of guilt should be explored. Destructive potential for guilt measured. Um, the question of em empathy deficits are universal. The question of balance is ideal. Um, I think the concept of balance uh, is probably going to end up to be the best approach to this, but uh, we'll have to see. But I am going to be designing further experiments in the future, and hopefully we get to the bottom of this question. Thanks for listening.